Patriots. Richard Seymour won three Super Bowls in his first four years with the Patriots. Lewis, he was learning. He was the young guy learning from the veteran greats. Yeah, he sure was. You know, and, and despite the fact that he was that guy, Bill still talks about the fact that in New England, he was the centerpiece. He was the thing. He was the person that the entire defense was built around because of his versatility. What a great career he had. Yep. Belichick says couldn't have won without him. Seymour so humbled and honored. Back to Boom. And now some of the bigger guys. Richard Seymour was drafted in the first round, sixth overall out of Georgia by the New England Patriots back in 2001. By the end of his fourth season, he and the Patriots had won three Super Bowls. Coincidence? Yeah, no, I don't think so. Of course, those teams had some clutch quarterbacking and some clutch kicking, that's for sure. But the real reason those Patriots won was defense, and Richard was in the middle of it, literally. Nose tackle, defensive end, several different techniques of a defensive tackle. It varied game to game with the Patriots. His presence was one reason that New England was so difficult to prepare for and play against. Sometimes his stat sheet wouldn't show very much, but ask the talented linebackers who played behind him how many tackles they would have had had big number 93 not been in there. Ask those in the know, and they would point out seven Pro Bowls, NFL All-Decade team of the 2000s. Or maybe the fact that um, almost 20% of his tackles in eight seasons with New England and four more with the Oakland Raiders resulted in a loss of yardage. Oh, by the way, he blocked seven kicks. Bill Belichick once said after Seymour's stat sheet claimed there was very little on it, like almost nothing. Quote, he was the best player on the field. He just dominated. More recently, Bill said it was an honor to coach him. I can't put into words what it's like to have a player and a person like Richard Seymour on your team. True to that statement is his presenter this afternoon, his high school principal, Titus Duran. The New England Patriots select Richard Seymour, defensive tackle from Georgia. I realized that he was special. I had no doubt that Richard would be successful. Richard Seymour's special NFL career began with the 2001 NFL Draft, where the Patriots saw enough potential to make him their first round pick, sixth overall. The biggest contribution to the game, his athletic ability. A big fella, but he could move. I'd watch him play in, and uh, he could get off the ball and get in the backfield, and he could run people down. And you wouldn't think that a person that big uh, would be that fast and can move that agilely to get back in the pocket and make things happen. That unique combination of talents allowed him to play defensive end and defensive tackle and made him feared by quarterbacks everywhere. It's going to be sacked. Richard Seymour. As a rookie, he played a crucial role in the Patriots' Super Bowl 36 upset of the Rams. Richard Seymour, Boy. the Patriots' terrific rookie first-round draft pick. He was an integral piece of New England's first three championship teams, a testament to his talents and professionalism. He has a work ethic, his love for the game, that he was willing and is willing to work and make himself successful. He was a leader. He was a leader. It ain't no more. It ain't tomorrow. Let's get it now. Let's go wide on three. He had a leadership ability in him that even though he was big and kind of gentle, but if he spoke, I think people listened to him. They respected him. Great pressure as he just overpowered his blocker and ran right he over. He had no chance. I mean, no chance. After eight seasons in New England, Seymour played his final four seasons with the Raiders. New city, new uniform, familiar dominance. Richard Seymour. His resume is outstanding. Seven Pro Bowls, 
three All-Pro selections, three Super Bowl rings. But his impact extends beyond his accolades, an enduring influence on and off the field. I say that he has been man or person enough to overcome obstacles. It has not been uh, easy uh, for him, but with his determination, his worth ethic, his family support, Richard has really come a long way. He has overcome those obstacles to be the Pro Football Hall of Famer as well as the person that he is. You're going to find no better person in life than Richard Seymour. It's going to be hit, going to be sacked. Back at the 39. I'm truly honored and privileged to present my boy, my friend, my son, former student, Richard Seymour, for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Richard Seymour for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Seymour's high school principal, Titus Duran. Thank you for that wonderful introduction and warm welcome to football heaven. And thank you, Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm honored to be here. I'm overwhelmed today with humility, not because what this moment says about me, but what this moment says about we and what we can do together. I'm overwhelmed today with gratitude because I didn't get here alone. None of us did. None of us could have. Class of 2022, they say you can judge a man by the company he keeps. I couldn't be among better company than you. It's a privilege to have my name bound forever with yours in the pro football Hall of Fame. Thank you. Football may be what I do, but family is who I am. To my brilliant and beautiful bride, Tanya, my high school sweetheart and best friend, who saw the first snap of my career to the last. Thank you, sweetheart, for everything you've added to my life. I'm not standing here without you. I love you deeply. Thank you. Scripture teaches your riches are in your family. To our wonderful kids, RJ, Kayla, Kennedy, and London, you're my greatest joy. I believe in your gifts. Of everything I've accomplished, there's no greater honor than being your dad. Continue to make mom and me proud. We love you. Of course, to my mom, I wouldn't be here without you or without dad, who I know is watching down on us in awe and admiration. It was 31 years ago to this month when you drove me to my first football tryout and I didn't even get out of the car. <laughs> Mom, if I told you three decades later I'd be wearing a gold jacket, 
you'd have no reason to believe me. But you believed in me even when I didn't believe in myself. You taught me kindness and empathy. Dad taught me the value of hard work and discipline. He was my hero. Together, you and Dad instilled in me the most important thing in life. As a friend and teammate, as a husband and dad, as a man, is to stand for something, to live by your values, to lead by example, and most importantly, to keep God first. Thank you. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for your love and faith in us. This day, I'm going to say it again, this day belongs to my family. Now, because of my family, I was well positioned for success as a young player at the University of Georgia. Hey, the national championship Bulldogs, I might add. We got any dogs in the house? <laughs> All of them served me well in 2001 as I prepared for the NFL draft. Coming out of college, the experts say, hey, Richard, you'll be a top 10 pick. And I knew exactly where I wanted to play. Some place warm. <laughs> The Lord answered that prayer and sent me south of the Mass Pike. When the Patriots selected me six overall, it was one of the luckiest breaks of my life. For one, I found that my family's values were at the heart of the Patriots' values. I was fortunate to join a veteran team because I had a lot to learn. My first year, I went around carrying their pads and getting the Dunkin' Donuts for the guys. I felt like the intern, but I was happy to do it. Because in exchange, these generous men shared their experience and their wisdom. They taught me the nuances of the game. Willie Mack taught me to be a true, true professional, to really pay attention to the details. Rodney Harrison taught me what it actually meant to practice hard. OTIS taught me how to take care of my body. And Ty Law taught me how to find joy in the struggle. AP was my spiritual leader. And, and Vrabel was busy drawing up plays to get us open, which he's still doing to this day. And we had a young quarterback, but we made it work. <laughs> Together, we were in constant pursuit of that edge, that edge we called ourselves the edgers. That edge was our culture. You see, we felt a sense of responsibility to each other, a sense of obligation. None of us wanted to be the the person to let the team down, to let our brothers down, and that defined us. We never cared who got the accolades as long as we got the W. And that wouldn't have happened without one of the best owners in sports. RKK, I call him the godfather. You may know him as Mr. Kraft, to the entire Kraft family. You showed us that being consistent in the little things added up to the big things always with heart and humanity. You set forth the vision and earn success the right way. RKK, thank you for being a mentor and a dear friend. You too will grace this stage. Patriot Nation, we have another in Canton. Thank you. And of course, this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Coach Belichick. Coach, you're the best coach in the game. The lessons that I've learned from you set me up for success, not just in the game, but in life. Work hard. Be meticulous in your preparation. Support your teammates. Respect your opponents. And put the team first. Coach. Thank you for everything you've taught me. And it's these values that put me in position to serve as captain during my next act, playing for another legendary owner and franchise. I grew up a huge Raider fan, so spending my last four years in Oakland, I see you over there. Spending my last four years in Oakland learning under the late, great Al Davis was an unexpected gift. 
Mr. Davis was a coach, commissioner, and Super Bowl champion. But above all else, he was a great leader because he welcomed and listened to every voice. It didn't matter if you were man, woman, black, white, gay, or straight. He believed that football was a game of values. And Mark Davis continues to serve as a beacon today, lighting that torch, because he knows it makes football better and it's the right thing to do. As the mantra goes, once a Raider. Thank you. Thank you. For the last 31 years, football, our game, has afforded me possibilities I never could have imagined. And with that privilege comes profound responsibility, the responsibility of stewardship, the responsibility to put others first, to take care of the details, to keep learning, to keep giving for the long-term strength of our game. Let us commit today and every day to be worthy stewards of our game and its values. In recognition of these values, with reverence for those who pass them to us, with faith in the generations to whom we pass them forward, I accept this honor, the greatest of my life. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love that he called this football heaven. And he also, of course, mentioned Tom Brady. And it really wasn't until after those three Super Bowl wins led by the defense that Brady really became Brady. And TB12 this week called Seymour a cornerstone of their Super Bowl winning teams and the perfect Patriot also called Seymour a menace. <laughs> when we come back from Canton, a first for the Hall of Fame.